How's it going everybody? I just noticed that in one of my previous videos, I received a 100 thumbs up. So thank you very much. That video was talking about how a rocket engine operates and how a nozzle functions to generate a force which propels a rocket into orbit. So I decided to make this video which deals with rocket fuels and how rockets generate a force with their fuels. So this video will focus on the types of rocket fuels which are found in today's industry and I will try and keep it very simple and clear to understand because I know some of you guys are engineering students or also high school students interested in space and you don't have too much of experience with rockets and how they work in their interior details. So I will try and keep this very short and straightforward. So let's get started. In my last video, I focused on the rocket nozzle and how it functions. Now, but typically the rocket nozzle is the last component of a rocket engine, right? Because it is the last component which generates the force because the nozzle, all a nozzle does is that it changes the speed of the flow, which can generate a force which can drive the rocket forward. But this video will focus on the type of fluid which is in the rocket engine and how that fluid comes about. So we will focus on four rocket engine types, solid, liquid, hybrid, and electric. Let's jump right into it. Now, I decided to start off with liquid rockets because these are the ones we see on TV and in the news at all times. For example, the, the NASA Space Shuttle, the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket, which is used to carry payloads into orbit, as well as the Atlas rocket, the Titan rocket, and the Delta rocket, manufactured by a company called ULA, which stands for United Launch Alliance, they use a fuel and an oxidizer and these rockets are called bipropellant which means they use two propellants stored in separate tanks and then these propellants mix and they create a combustion process and from the combustion process the mixture occurs in something called a chamber which is a combustion chamber which can withstand very high pressure the way the propellants enter the combustion chamber from the the storage tanks is called a turbo pump the turbo pumps are used commonly for the rockets we see on TV because they're very powerful and they can raise the gas to a very high pressure so it can be pumped in the combustion chamber very quickly. So there's also a pressure regulator and a relief valve. So since rockets operate under very high pressure, we must make sure that it doesn't leak anywhere. And that is why we have a relief valve to control any leakage in the rocket engine while the engine is being fired. For oxidizer, which is one type of fuel we need in a liquid rocket engine, they used LOX, which stands for liquid oxygen. These are the most popular type because it is very safe to use and very powerful. The fuel, it can be either gasoline, liquid nitrogen, or hydrogen. And that is it for liquid systems. Now let's move on to a solid propulsion system. Now solid rockets are very dangerous because they are essentially a bomb which deflagrates instead of detonates. A deflagration is a slow burn because a solid motor has to burn for a long time period. But the main advantage of a solid motor is that unlike a liquid rocket motor, it does not react with the outside environment as much. And that is why you can store them for a long time period. This was the reason why solid fuels were used in missiles by the Soviets back in the day because they could be launched from the air. And the outside air temperature had little to no effect on the solid motor because it's not reacting with the environment. A rocket, which is called the Pegasus rocket, developed by a company called Orbital ATK, which was formerly known as Orbital Sciences Corporation. They use a multi-stage solid rocket propulsion system. A solid motor is essentially a grain, which is called a solid fuel. So the igniter burns the grain, and then the grain will burn itself, and then it'll combust and then create a fuel. It is very important to cover the solid motor with a metallic case because it has to protect against heating and structural damage which can be imposed on the case due to the burning of the solid motor. The type of solid fuels include ammonium perchlorate, ammonium nitrate and HTPB which I don't know how to pronounce that long name unfortunately. <laughs> a solid fuel is characterized by a burning rate which tells you how much the performance of the fuel is. And you want something which can burn quickly and also for a long time period. The solid rockets are used for amateur rocketry because you don't need a liquid propulsion system components such as a turbo pump and piping because a solid rocket motor is, is essentially a chamber and a nozzle. With that being said, let's now move on to the two, to the two remaining types, hybrids and electric. 
Now hybrid rockets are very popular because they use essentially a solid fuel and a liquid oxidizer. There's a company which was formed by Sir Richard Branson from the UK and this company is called Virgin Galactic. They're building their spaceship to spacecraft for commercial space transport and travel. And this uses a hybrid rocket system because it's very safe and you can also control its speed. So there's a valve on the rocket which controls how much of liquid oxidizer can be injected into the solid fuel. Now these rockets are very safe because the solid fuel can be stored for long time periods and the liquid fuel, one example is, is N2O which is nitrous oxide which is very safe and can be stored but very easily. The solid fuel, the one we used and which is the most popular used now is called paraffin wax. So that's it for our hybrid system. Now let's move on to electric systems which are by far the most scientifically insane things ever but they are quite popular in the news so let's jump right into it. So lastly, we have electric propulsion. Now these systems are driven by electricity and plasma. So there is no combustion involved at all, which makes it a very environmentally feasible option because you don't burn any fuel, which can lead to pollution of the, of the environment. And that is why a lot of spacecraft use this. And since they create a very, very small amount of force, they can still create torque because of torque is equal to force times distance. They use ion propulsion systems, which use electric energy and plasma to generate a force. And since there is no combustion involved, the pressure amounts are very low. So this will lead to a very high specific impulse for any value of force, right? Because the, the mass flow rate is super small. In this video, I will give one example. It's called your MPD propulsion system or magnetoplasma dynamic. It simply uses a force generated by a magnetic field. And I do believe that this type of propulsion system will gain popularity as time goes on. That is it for this video, guys. Thank you for watching. We talked about solid, liquid, hybrid, and electric propulsion systems for rocket and spacecraft. I hope you guys learned something interesting from this video. And if you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate at all to leave it in the comments below because I will be sure to check it. And also, if you have any feedback for the way I thought and if, if I didn't you know, explain something too well, please let me know in the comments because it will serve as a benchmark for my next videos. And with that being said, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care, have a nice day, bye-bye.